My dad coming down into the cellar when I was 11 or 12 years old to watch me paint and stand behind me after supper and have a cigarette and comment on a few things. Uh, this is surprising because he's from a working class background, only got as far as the ninth grade, and he liked art or wanted his son to like art. Uh, it was very interesting. and. That was true in my father's case. So it wasn't to criticize or anything, it was to support. And here he is standing behind me. He might make a comment about, how about a little red over there, chair? And that's what I would gladly do, just because it was a bonding thing as well as you know, I love my father. Here I am uh, uh, shrunken down from the age I did this picture probably in my 60s to a 11 year old kid. So I'm, I'm really trying to uh, be the 11 year old kid, but still me at the same time. Uh, that I did the picture. And this is symbolic of my father leaving the cellar for the last time. Uh, not that I knew that then, or can remember any particular last time, but that's what it's meant to be. Well, this is, as I imagined it might have been, uh, my father at the age of 52 had a heart attack at work and died. And this is my mental picture of it, but it turned out it was another, it was outside the elevator at work, he died. He wasn't sick or anything, he just died of shock, a heart attack. Here I'm at the funeral parlor. Now all the pictures are in blue. Now these are acrylic 18 by 24 on Bristol board. And this one was done probably 1992 or so. Here's a moment uh, of my father passing, the spirit of him passing into me. Uh, it didn't happen in that visual way, but I sensed it. And, and I've carried it the rest of my life.
Here I am, uh, 14, about, and my father. He died, uh, it was a week before my 15th birthday in 1952. Or 1953 was my 15th birthday, and he died in January of 53. On our front steps, also about the same age. Here I'm trying to make a time machine, some way I could visit my father the night before he died. And I figured out this method of the fact that artists know the bottom layers of their pictures, even though they're painted over. And so only our artists have that knowledge. And so I decided if I painted a place I wanted to go to and then ripped out of the back of the painting, I would be there. So this is me doing that, and my father's looking up, wondering, who's this old guy here? But I really felt a connection. I'm, I'm glad I did this painting. This is around 1990, 91. This is my, my mother was having dreams of my father coming to visit her. And one time he came and said that he didn't think he'd be able to come back again but if she went with him all she had to do was go to the attic stairs and in her dream she did and then about to open the door and then she to go up the attic stairs she remembered that she had me at home and my younger brother at home so she didn't go and she lived 39 more years to die at the age of 89 and now she's finally climbing the attic stairs in this painting. This is acrylic. It's very large compared to the others. Uh, this is when I was seven years old and had let my dog out of the cellar where my mother put him because he shed and, and she didn't want him shedding all over the couch or furniture or whatever. So she put him in the cellar when we went to bed. And I'd get up around three in the morning and go downstairs and open the cellar door and he'd come out and I was seven and he was one. So we were matched perfectly. And I definitely was uh, his companion as well as he was mine. And here you can see these shrunken 50 year old or whatever to that size and here we are sleeping not sleeping it's fake sleep but lying in the vestibule of the house and I'm putting a rug over him to uh, fake like it's a blanket and we do that fake sleep and then later uh, I would take him back to the cellar and go back up to bed his name was fella my father named him, and I think it was after FDR's dog, because of around that time, World War II. Was, that dog's name was Falla, and very pedigreed. This was a mutt. And one of the things Fella and I would do would go out and rummage to the garbage, and he was my constant companion. And back in those days, they had open dump trucks and the garbage would be exposed to the air and the garbage men would be, one would be in the back of the truck pushing the garbage around, the other would be on the running board and the third one would be driving the truck and would jump off, the running board guy would jump off, grab the garbage cans, and these are steel cans and throw them up to the guy in the truck and he'd dump them all out and then throw it back and he'd put it down and he'd get back on the running board and go to the next house. I used to think that was so cool. They were my first heroes. So here I am hiding behind a telephone pole while this is all going on. Everything is taking place in Binghamton, my hometown. 
in this case it's 1944-45. Here I'm playing guns with another kid. Uh, Probably I'm around, oh, I had to be about seven. And uh, my mom is looking out the window watching this while she's mopping or sweeping or something. And it looks like the kid is scared, but he isn't. He's playing scared, and the dog is playing dangerous, but he's not. He's barking, but he's, everybody knows it's a game. Except my mom, who was really concerned that the dog is going to bite somebody because I was all boy and, you know, fighting and stuff in a playful way. My father came home that night and my mom told him about the dog, that he was, she thought, overprotective. And my father said, no, not my dog. And so he devised a game where he would touch me and I would react, ouch, and then the dog, see what the dog would do. And, um, the dog come running across the room and jumped in the air. It didn't bite my dad, but kind of threatened him or warned him. And um, that was enough proof. So they called him, uh, yeah, I was in on it. They called the Humane Society and, and the Humane Society said that, well, it'd be easy to adopt out this dog from the description because uh, there's so many dairy farms around Binghamton and it'd be a perfect dog for that. So when the guy came from the Humane Society, my mom put the dog in the back of the truck and we were all gone. I mean, I was at school, my sister and my brothers were at school, my father was at work. So when we came home that night, uh, we knew the dog wasn't going to be there, but it was really sad. And everybody was upset, especially me. Uh, many years later, 50 years later, actually, I was um, doing a poster for the School of Visual Arts to be in the subway and on buses, and bus stops, etc. So I did this one. This is not the post. This is a sketch for the poster. It's an acrylic. I did the poster in oil. Um, of my mom baking dog cookies and the dog looking like fella, a fella, um, but his ears are stand up. Um, He's looking into the open oven, wondering where all those dogs came from. So, now this this acrylic I did about 2010 um, of me coming up from the cellar when I was 18 working at night, which is my hours. I love work at night. And my mom is a night owl as well. I mean, I get it from her, I'm sure. And so she, this is around midnight. She's having coffee and about to go to bed because I'm still not going to go to bed. Um, and we sit down and talk and I hear her stories of her childhood in Lossburg. Pennsylvania as a coal miner's daughter and she was born in 1902 so this has to do with Victorian times and all. She left home at the age of 15. Here I'm having a cigarette. Uh, at 18 I've been smoking for about three years already. And my mom's gonna have one. We're gonna 
I'm going to hear a story or talk about something else. I mean, it wasn't always storytelling. But from that, only in recent years did I realize that even though I got the spirit of art from my dad, I got the content from my mom because of her great storytelling. I mean, I loved to hear her talk, and she would talk like like it was brand new to her, you know, like she was enthusiastic about it. So my sense of content and storytelling, I'm sure, comes from my mother. She didn't come down in the cellar or whatever and look at my art like my dad did, but uh, she supported it. But she didn't go out of the way to... to talk about the images but she told stories and I really got something from that here she is about the age of 50 around the time my dad died in the side yard with a pleasant face. <laughs> 